uh, our legend of Australian chess, international grandmaster Ian Rogers, uh, who is actually visiting, uh, you know, first uh, GM Norm event in Melbourne. Welcome, Ian. Hello. And uh, just please tell me, what do you think about the tournament? Well, it's great to have a Grandmaster tournament in Australia again. It's been 14 years since we had one. And uh, thank you, Lena, for putting it together. Yeah, thank you, Ian, for nice words. Could you please tell me, you know, uh, like uh, explain the listeners and the viewers uh, the history of a uh, GM event in Australia. Did you have any opportunities like that while you were, you know, like uh, many years ago? Well, the very first Grandmaster tournament was in Brisbane in 1979. Uh, that had uh, Anatoly Lane, uh, Raymond Keane, uh, and then um, Carl Robach, so really real blast from the past playing and I was lucky enough to get an invite to that I wasn't even an international master then and after that uh, we had to wait another 12 years and then there were two Grandmaster tournaments in the same year in 1991 the Mercantile Mutual Tournament uh, which Cathy and I organised and then a Sepikol tournament organised by a Sydney uh, player Abraham Stern and uh, after that it was another eight years we had a tournament at the Queen Victoria Building in Sydney, organised by Jason Lyons, who put together probably the strongest field we've had in Australia with uh, Joel Benjamin, the winner. And 14 years later, we're having our next tournament. And uh, you put it together on a shoestring. All the other events had significant sponsorship. You're the first one who's put it together from, from nothing. Thank you very much, Ian. And uh, how important do you think uh, for Australian chess to have tournaments like that? Well. In recent years, I would have said international master tournaments were more important, but we're starting to get them. And now we've got players who can genuinely aspire to get grandmaster norms. So I think it's, it's quite valuable for them to have opportunities. So uh, you, you have a look at their peers. Uh, for example, people like Bobby Cheng, the players from uh, Russia, for example, are already getting GM norms, even though they're equivalent strength to him. And uh, they, they need the chances. So it's very good to see them playing in it and also they get a chance to see what a tournament is like where even after you lose you get a strong player you, you just get one good player after another and probably the only Australian apart from the veterans like Daryl Johansson who have experienced that is Max Illingworth because he played in Europe in a number of first Saturday tournaments and that sort of thing and so he understands that uh, you just have to come up for a, a tough game every single day but the the younger ones are just learning that people like James Morris is, is beginning to understand that it doesn't get any easier, unlike a Swiss system tournament. Yeah. What do you think, you know, uh, perhaps ICF should continue to, you know, to chip in and sponsor events like that? It's true, they're very expensive. Uh, you've, you've done well to get at least one Asian player into Hong Kong, at least the airfares are reasonable there, but it's, uh, it's not easy to run a, an event like this. Uh, you, you did it by having big entry fees for the IMs, uh, the result is, of course, you can sometimes get players who can't afford to play, people like Moulton Lee. So that was that's the downside of, of this model. You'd love to have every every player that you wanted in it, but uh, you know you can't you can't choose if you've got a, a very low budget. So I think if the ACF has some money for this sort of thing, it'd be good. Uh, I think there's more chance of doing this sort of thing in New South Wales, where the state association and the junior league have have more money than in Victoria but uh, it needs an organiser and that's the, the tough bit and you've taken on that job. You, know, you have to get the players in. If, if someone withdraws, you have to have a grandmaster ready or a foreign player ready. It's actually very, very difficult in Australia to do. And uh, so, well, I should be interviewing you. You've done it. No, no, no thanks. Yeah, and please tell me, any surprises for you? Uh, you know, uh, now it's three rounds to go in GM Norm event. You've got two people still in the chains for the Norm, uh, Jan Ganton Smirnov. He's changing KM Norm, his final I am Norm, and uh, Max Ellingworth, you know, he have got a very big task to win all three remaining games. And uh, in IM events, you've got a few people still chasing Norms, including uh, you know, the lowest rated player, Carl Zalesko. Any surprises for you uh, from the, you know, uh, tournament? What do you think? Um, not big ones. Uh, Anton uh, Smirnov's been playing very well for quite a while. Uh, the win over Jared Johansson was a big win, but uh, he's, that's the sort of scalp that you, you expect him to get nowadays. Uh, the fact that he's undefeated after six rounds is really remarkable. I'm not so surprised by Max Illingworth's performance. He's playing at about 2,500 and he's done that in quite a few tournaments uh, previously. Uh, I don't think he's even too worried about getting a gem norm. He just wants to get his strength higher before he really has a, an assault on the norm. Uh, the big surprise for me is Norman Smith's actually because uh, I never thought he was that great a player but 100% in the uh, St. Uh, Schwartz Memorial and then 
uh, five and a half out of six here. It's an incredible result. Uh, he's playing exceptionally well. Yeah, here you go. Latvian chess school is, you know, uh, alive and well. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what do you think about, uh, you know, if you look at uh, uh, the field of a double cup uh, 2014 event, you can see with Australia, you know, getting uh, better and better, you know, events organized and, you know, more grandmasters coming like uh, double cup, got a few, uh, you know, big names are coming up, including uh, former European champion Nisi Piana from Romania. And uh, obviously this place will be playing in Sydney International Open. Perhaps maybe Melbourne need uh, not only round robin event uh, like uh, maybe like Swiss event. What do you think about it? It could be good. Well, I think there may be an opportunity if uh, the Sydney International stops after this year, which is normally the event played immediately after the Double Cup, then uh, Melbourne could come in and, and hold the Melbourne International instead of the Sydney International in the school holidays, and and that would work quite well. I, the Double Cup, if it was only three years ago, the Double Cup had never had a 2600 player in their tournament. Uh, and that includes myself, Tony Miles. We were never 2,600 when we played the Double Cup. And uh, so the, the fact that they may have six or seven 2,600 players uh, next year's event is quite remarkable. Even more remarkable because, unfortunately, there's a clash with the Bangkok Open, uh, which is normally an event that players can play both. Uh, but this year, Easter and Songkram are, are more or less at the same time. So the two events uh, clash. They're both connected with religious festivals. So the Double Cup is, is doing really well. I think... The word gets out at some point. The same applies to Bangkok. It's just a very pleasant event to play. It's well organised and prize money is decent. So you, you have a really good time when you come out and play. You get to see Australia. Uh, I, there's no reason why foreign players can't come to the Double Cup, but it really needs two tournaments in a row because uh, this sort of event where there's just the one event, it's really hard to get people out for just one tournament. So uh, if you can... Uh, ally, say, the Doble Cup with the Melbourne International next year or rather in 2015, you've got much better chance of it succeeding. You share the costs, you share the guarantees and so on. Yeah. Uh, that's the best chance. Thanks, Ian, for your advice. What do you think about uh, uh, who will be... I'll be, we'll put you in the spotlight. Who you reckon will be the next top three or top two uh, Australian grandmasters, young grandmasters? Who got the better, best chances to to become a new Australian girl masters in not a distant future, hopefully. Well, uh, obviously Max Lingway has got a big advantage since he already has a norm. It helps actually to be a bit of an up and down player because your good results can be GM norms and your bad ones nobody really notices. So that helps. In, in that respect, maybe James Morris has a chance too because his good results are, are exceptionally good and his bad ones are pretty awful. Um, mm. is it Moulton Lee is maybe a little bit too consistent. He's playing better and better. Uh, Bobby Cheng um, must give a good chance because uh, his result at the Australian Open was so good he just has to repeat that in some overseas events and he'll have GM norms. And of course Anton Smirnov uh, is just better and better. Yeah, if you can't nowadays be the top rated 12 year old in the world without being a really good player. And not only is Anton the top 12 year old in the world but he's kept that position and his rating keeps going up. So I, I think uh, in the long term uh, the person you the people you'd expect to occupy the top of the Australian Olympic team in years to come, you'd have to say, were Bobby Chang and Anton Smirnov. Uh, but I would be very surprised if the next Olympiad team didn't have at, at least three of those young players in it. Uh, but possibly not Anton yet, but uh, people like Moulton Lee, Max Illingworth, Bobby Chang are all very likely to be Olympiad players. And if you get to the Olympiad, then you have a chance to, to get some gem norms. Uh, you know, you aren't going back 20 years, Basically, Dara Johansson did it with one opportunity every two years at the Olympiad. And, uh, you know, hopefully these kids will have a bit more opportunity, but the Olympiad is really a big chance. Yeah, thanks, Ian. And the last question, uh, you know, you retired from uh, professional uh, chess, playing chess uh, a while ago. And uh, please tell you how, how you're doing, you know, what you're doing these days. And uh, we know that you're, you know, traveling around the world, writing uh, for various chess, you know, uh, you know uh, periodicals and... Uh, online stuff, we saw your nice reports from, uh, uh, you know, uh, World Chess Championship, unfortunately, Australian newspapers were not uh, very kind, you know, very kind to, to chess players in our country. But please tell us about how, how is life treating you, well, you know, in uh, chess-wise and uh, just for, you know, last three, five years since you retired, actually, more than five years now. You retired uh, during, uh, you know, Adelaide tournament, the uh, checkmate. Uh, yep, 2007. Rhythm, 2007. So, okay, yes. A while ago. Well, I'm getting used to not being allowed to play anymore, uh, only just. I've occasionally snuck in a, a friendly lightning tournament or something like that, but uh, basically I'm not playing at all. 
Uh, I think the last semi-serious tournament I played was uh, in Latvia, in Yermola, when uh, Alexei Shirov convinced me that I should play the, the friendly blitz tournament because there were lots of amateurs there. And by about board nine, I was sitting on board one against Mamadi Arav and thinking, what am I doing here? This is, <laughs> this is real stress. So I offered him a quick draw and uh, got out of there quite quickly. But, uh, no, basically I haven't played seriously at all. I'm not allowed to play if I care whether I live, win or lose. So, yeah, my main job is reporting on top tournaments. I travel around the world with Cathy covering big tournaments. I've, I've, uh, I've done quite a bit of commentary, uh, mostly live, but I'm doing a bit more online commentary nowadays. Um, covered the Tull Memorial last year, um, and I'll be doing some commentary at Vikanze this year, so th that should be fun. Uh, and apart from that... Uh, doing a little bit of coaching, but not not so much at the moment. Thank you very much, and you know I'm enjoying your you know uh, reports in uh, Russian magazine 64. I guess you're mastering Russian. I've uh, nearly perfected it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Ian. Thank Do you very much. Dovidenia. Yeah, Dovidenia. All the best, and thanks for you know, and good luck. Thank you. Thank